Today is Sunday, May 2nd, 1976. This is radio station WGTE-FM in Toledo, Ohio, inaugurating its first day of non-commercial service. As you can probably tell, this is going to be a special episode of the Rough Draft Diaries. Hello, I'm Haley Taylor, and today the Rough Draft Diaries is helping to celebrate the 40th anniversary of WGTE's radio station FM 91. The only problem is I'm slightly unqualified to be in charge of such celebrations. I've only been working at FM 91 for the past two years. I could easily tell you what's happening in the studio right now, but anniversaries are a time to look back and reminisce about the years gone by. So I had to enlist some help. I called the man you heard at the beginning of this episode, Tom Payne. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's Haley Taylor. Can you hear me okay? Yes, how are you? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Good, Good thank, thank you. you. Tom is really the perfect person to talk to because not only did he bring FM 91 to the air in the mid-70s, he saw it grow and develop into the station it is today. Tom was the general manager of FM 91 from 1975 to 2011. Now, that's a lot of time to cover, so we're going to get moving here. I'm going to let Tom mainly tell the story of FM 91, but first I'll give just a little bit of background. WGTE was approved to construct an FM radio station in the early 70s. At that time, WGTE was only a television station, TV 30. Tom joined the team in 1975 when conversations began regarding when FM 91 would first take over the Toledo airwaves. It was a hectic time, as TV 30 was just wrapping up the TV 30 auction, where viewers could bid on thousands of donated goods and services. Now, May 2nd, 1976 became the inaugural day of broadcasting for FM 91. That Sunday date was chosen to follow the conclusion of the annual week-long Channel 30 buy-in, or auction, which would go off the air Saturday night, early Sunday morning. The radio staff worked on the buy-in that night and came into the radio studio at 6 a.m., still dressed in our frilly, rented tuxedos. For some reason, the transmitter wouldn't turn on, even though we had been testing it all week long. We finally signed on at about 9.30. It was very embarrassing. In 1976, the only national radio program for us Hour of all things considered, delivered to WGTE on a crummy telephone line. There was no morning edition or exploring music or other national programs to hear live, so we were on our own. We relied on the post office for tape recorded concerts, which were mailed to us, and we had to produce nearly 15 hours each day ourselves. We had nine full time radio people with 10 volunteer hosts all attempting to make compelling, thoughtful radio on a shoestring. In those early days, we had three classical music announcers. So besides the healthy chunks of classical music, we broadcast live Toledo City Council meetings, a story time for children, a nightly jazz show, classic plays from the BBC, a daily book chapter reading show, 60 minutes of local news and art reviews, and an afternoon roundtable with guest speakers. There were lectures from the University of Toledo and live TSO concerts Saturday nights. And from the very first year, we broadcast the Saturday Metropolitan Opera, again over a poor Monaro telephone line. And every day back then, I worried that the morning board operator would not oversleep. Then it all changed with the move to a satellite network interconnection. NPR and local stations could exchange programs and develop new Saturday and Sunday audiences. WGTE would become a 24-hour operation. Prairie Home Companion, Car Talk from the Top, and Weekend Edition became available. With computer and digital technology, FM 91 just sounded better. No more cutting audio tape with a razor blade. LP records skipping while the guy was in the restroom, or late sign-ons. And after moving to a new studio on Detroit Avenue, we didn't have to worry about getting stuck in an elevator. I guess what hasn't changed over the years is the devotion of both the FM91 staff and the devotion of its audience. 
and the constant need to raise money to support this special, unique program service. The end. Even though this episode of the Rough Draft Diaries is coming to a close, I don't want the celebrations to end just yet. If you have any special memories from the early days of FM 91, feel free to share them on our Facebook page. Once there, you can find old photos and memorabilia from our first broadcast back in 1976. You can also watch a behind-the-scenes video of how this particular reel of tape, you who have supported public broadcasting, Channel 30, the original FM 91 sign-on, came from our library back to the air. That's at facebook.com slash roughdraftdiaries or facebook.com slash WGTE public. Thank you so much for choosing FM 91 this morning, whether it was just for the Rough Draft Diaries or whether you've been listening for the past 40 years. Now it's onwards and upwards to the next 40 years of Toledo's public radio station, FM 91.